Hello there and welcome to another week in our garden. Very overcast today, I do believe it's going to rain today, later today. It rained yesterday so we couldn't film yesterday but we're going to try and get it in now before we, before we get wet. Now the first thing we've got to do this week is time of year for checking your grease bands on your fruit trees. I know we've checked them in the summer, now we have to check them again ready for winter because the codling moth now will be crawling up the tree, it can't fly now, it crawls up the tree, overwinters up there and lays all the eggs on the browse ready to go on to your apples next year. So we'll try and get the grease band sorted so if she is going up we can catch her and stop her laying her eggs, okay? Here we are then, this is the pear tree. It is still a bit sticky but we just need to pop a bit more top and bottom. I have brought it up. Oop. It's just fruit tree grease but it does a good job. I have an old paintbrush that I leave in it actually to do the job and I just I just make sure the top and bottom is still you need gloves on for this, it's an awfully sticky job. We know that the green bit's still sticky but we just double up on the the actual grease itself that is below and above. There you are look. And that's one. We'll do one more. This is a plum tree we're going to do. It's got a massive split in it there. Look, we'll have to keep an eye on that. There's nothing we can do. It's probably been done at the nursery at some stage. But the, it'll keep growing. It'll be fine. Again, we're just... Just make sure it's all nice and sticky around the bottom. That is quite sticky. Let's put a bit more grease on the brush. Remember to use fruit tree grease, no other grease will do. Well that's two of them done, I'll progress and do them all now. So they're all set up. I keep an empty pot to keep the brush in. And that one is the one with the grease, it's rather messy. Now another little job you can do, or I will do, while we're doing the grease bands, I have a quick look round for any diseased branches, especially in this old pear tree, it always has some somewhere. And then I cut those off. Later, when we've got no leaves on and we're really into winter, I will give them a good winter wash but at the moment there's just need to check that there's no dead or dying brand disease branches more than anything I'll show you one if we can find one can you see here this one's dead there's no life in that at all we need to just take that up it's only a small one usually you can get them quite big there you are pick that up in a sec also look there there's what we call a coat hanger, we don't need that, we'll take that. There you go. Just looking round, another little piece here, look. Not a lot really, but just to be on top of it all the time, then it never gets out of hand. We'll give them a winter wash later on, and then we'll give them a dose of potassium in the spring to help them encourage them to get some fruit. Now, I've got a few spring cabbage we need to pop in so we'll nip to the cabbage tunnel and get these in now down we've took the side off the tunnel so you can see a bit better and we can plant these as you can see the january king looks well and the kale looks well i think we've actually lost one but it's been i think the drought got that because it's been very very dry just lately until we got that rain yesterday I was actually carrying water down here. These are Offenham 2 spring cabbage. These will follow 
the January King so we can keep the harvesting of the cabbages going. Lovely little plants, we've grown them on that uh, table up at the shed and they've grown quite well on there. The spacing will be about the same. The spring cabbage they won't make too big a plant I don't think. And it's a lovely drop of rain, it really has happened it down. They might not, yeah, they're just ready lot. But I didn't want to leave them too long in that tray as the weather turns and we'll never get them out. We'll pop those in look. Remember all the brassicas etc. Burn them in well. I'll plant one more and then I'll get them all in for you. we we'll just step it out one nut, so it's about here. And hopefully these will be long gone after the spring so we can get the summer cabbage in, in this mesh and get it going again. Remember tight, nice and tight. Oops, going to bury him anyway. The soil is still dry, look. never mind, it'll be fine. I'll get these planted and then I'll come back to you. Uh, just two more to go in, that makes 15 plants, that'll do nicely in this tunnel. Nice and tight, remember, press them well. And then tidy round. Well prepared this ground, beautiful ground. There you go, one more just there. Last one in. And that's a nice tunnel of January King and spring cabbage and some nice kale at that end. I'll just cover up and then we'll harvest some leeks. There are three lovely leeks making lovely tops but making good bottoms but I'm still suffering a little bit with the rust. Now we're going to lift a couple of swedes, okay? Leave a bit of room for this area if I like a little bit. Now I'm doing it at a distance today because the ground is a little bit sticky and although she's got a wellingtons on she won't come on the garden. Uh, a good couple of leeks there, I'll just clean them up a little bit. As always in this land, a little bit of slug damage. But they'll be fine, they're good luck. I'll take that clean off there. Look. I might have to lift them a little bit later and store them in the shed because I think if we leave them the slugs will be, will be at them something terrible. I'll just clean the top. There you go. That'll want washing. Yes. I'm going to take this one for, for a friend of mine who wants a screen to try. He's not keen on them but I'm sure he'll enjoy this. Oh, not now, I've dropped it. This one's still alive, it jumped out my hand. I'll just clean the top off, look. There you go. And then we'll give it a wash when we get up there. 
Now we're going to get a handful of carrots as we go past. We're going to have to move quickly now because it's just starting to rain. And then we'll try and get the cuttings in. We'll see how we go. There. I seem to be pulling some of the small ones out as well, but never mind. There's the few carrots, we'll add them to those and we'll take those up to the house. Excellent growing in this raised bed. There you are then, the few there, very nice. Right, I'll put these in the barrow and I'll try and dig a parsnip out best I can. Right, I managed to get three parsnips out. A bit early. That one wants trousers. It'll be something there to use. And those two are excellent. They're, I'll just cut this top off this one. I broke those off trying to lift it. We'll take them up and give them a wash and then show you at the table. Right, the Brussels are still off limits because we've had no frost yet. But we have a celeriac, one that was left over from a line that got frosted and blew to seed. So we'll lift that one. We're going to get this lonely celeriac. Oh, the ground is hard. We've had not enough rain yet. There he is. You can eat the leaves on these if you like that nice celery taste these I'll clean these off with the knife I haven't brought it over that's a good plant that'll do nicely so hard the soil not so dry now we're in the fruit cage at the area where we take the overwintered hardwood cuttings now I've been asked if I could do some fruit bushes again I wasn't going to do them this year but we will anyway because we've been asked to show how to do them so I'll go through it again I'm only going to take three of each this time so we'll go through the process of what we do to cut a good trench about an inch wide look with the spade and then we fill it halfway with horticultural grit and sand when I bought this sand it was so wet I actually mixed a little bit of peat in with it just to break it so I could use it it was solid lumps it was no good at all but it won't do any harm right so when you're about halfway up like that well, there's plenty in there three are red currants I will take the top out I have to take it out somewhere where I can pick the bits up there. Look, we'll take the top off there. And then, can you see all these buds at the bottom? And then there's a little bit of hardwood. That's what we're after, that little bit of hardwood. But we'll just nip all those off. I'll do it with the secateurs. It looks better. You see, we'll just take those off. And then, we'll just re-trim it under that node anyway. There you go. We'll just blow some more of those. Uh, look, we don't want all those off. That's better. Is because we're showing how to do them, I'll show you how you used to do it. If you take a little slither with your secateurs, like that, off, that helps the roots get out. Not necessary, but you can do it if you wish. Then we just pop them in. Just pop them into the side of the trench because we want to push the trench over to it. So going quite quickly now, it's off. These woody bits you can see with the wood, just take those off like that. Rub a couple of three of those off, look, just to... And clean to that, there. Remember very sharp secateurs. There's a nice piece there, look, so we'll just take that off. Like that and then that goes in no hormone powder or anything on these is it down in this trench for a year so there's no rush plenty of wood on this one we'll take it off there this time 
that's it. And we just take those the woody ones off with the second tears. And then knock the rest off with my oh not that one. There you go. That's better. Then just knock those off with my fingers. Through two or three. And then that'll encourage the roots. Again. Nice piece of bark there, look, so we just take a skim off. Make sure it's clean. There you go. And then just push them in. Label. They're red currants. These are black currants. Basically it's the same. The older wood at the bottom is where the root will come from. So that one we'll take that off. We'll go just under there not. It looks like we've got a helper come to give us a hand. Don't we? No. I'll just take the top out because it'll probably die back anyway. There's a little bit of a leaf stem there. Look, we'll take that off. Now these, you can do this or not do this. I'll do it for this time and then. And then make sure they're in. Under there, look. The scrape, nip top out, and in. Make sure they're going into something, don't be hung. Again, look, cut off, scrape, rip the top off. Just take a couple of buds off, we don't want to take too many off. I forgot this one, so we'll do it now. Just take the buds off, just a couple, rinse all the clean, that'd be fine, look that's got four breaks in the top. Then we put the label with it. Now these are gooseberries, these are actually the green ones so we haven't got a label with these. Same way, I want the chicken on these things and take a piece off. Right, we just take the top out and then I'm just going to break the buds off. I'm not going to take the thorns off because they'll get on the garden and they'll probably stick in me at a later stage. I'll just take those buds off so it'll root from the wood. Yeah, so it's clean to there. A few leaves on the top, that's fine. And then we'll push that in. That's nice. Yeah. And again, I'll do this one quickly so we can show you. Bit of old wood at the bottom, so we'll take it off there. Nip the top out. And then I'll just break these buds off. Look. Very, very sharp, these points on gooseberries. There you go, and in it goes. I juggle them up and down to make sure they're in the sand tight. Again, look, we'll do this one proper time. Okay, we go there. Rip the top. You'd be busy if you was doing a whole field of these. Then I should just strip a bit off and pop it in. There you are. In they go. They're the green ones, so I don't label those. Then we've got white currants, so exactly the same again. Look. Nice stick. Very dormant, this one. There is three. We'll real clean that one under there. You can see it's totally alive look because it's that. I'm still going to take the top off even though it's dormant and pop it into the sand. Again find your bud. I've no need to blow these off because they're totally dormant look so we'll leave those. Get that bit of wood out we don't want that in. Do a chicken. And top of that one. That's the white currants in. 
and then we've just got three more which are the red gooseberries I've half prepared them not I took the leaves off the bottom we just take the stems there we go clean that nip the top just take these buds off my goodness they are sharp and then good pair of secateurs if you can scrape with them as well look there you go take the wood away into the sand nearly there now Helps the shop and in. And again, under there. I Take those off. Three or four, as long as you go too far up. If it was doing it the old fashioned way, we'll give it a four inch stem. A little bit of a scrape, and that's now ready to go in. Take that lump out, we don't want that in. Right, so that's the red ones in. Once we've got them in, I always, same as last year, use the T handle of your spade and just tighten that sand around those cuttings like that. A bit of soil goes in, that's fine. Yeah, and then we can push the lot back. As soon as you got them to that stage, just carefully with your foot, not full weight on, but enough just to push that soil tight down so that it squeezes the air out. You see? That's 15 fruit bushes that will be ready in a year's time. So it'll be a year before we dig those up, like we did this year, and pop them on. I'll go over the bed with the four pronged rake when we're finished. Now, the shrubs that we're going to do and the vine we're going to do, they're still in full leaf yet. So we can't really do those, but we'll probably pull them in within the next couple of weeks or when they're ready. Okay. So that's your, that's your fruit bushes done. I hope that's helped. It's pretty straightforward. The thing is now, keep them weeded. Middle of summer, give them a drop of water and then they'll be fine. And we'll dig them up next year as little bushes, okay? Right, this is our little harvest this week. Now we have some peppers and some cucumbers there because we had a rainstorm. So I went up and harvested those and cleaned the greenhouse out, ready for spraying in a few moments. So now that is the last of the peppers, some are a bit small but quite usable. A couple of cucumbers left and the last as well. And the carrots are now pulling very well as you can see. To get, when you pull a big one out you always pull a few small ones out so we'll take them when we're doing it. Also a couple of nice swede, one for a friend, one for the, using in the house. Celeriac, now if you want your celeriac nice and white earth them up and it keeps them white I'm afraid if I earth mine up the slugs will be in there getting them terrible slug problem down there at the moment yeah you just peel them off they'll be fine three good parsnips they say the parsnips get sweeter as the weather gets worse so we'll have to they'll get better then won't they leeks they're making good leeks, good bottoms, and the taste is there, but the, as I say, the tops are, are suffering with rust terrible. Now we've got the harvest done. We've taken it up to the house, and we decided we're going to clean and sterilise the little greenhouse today. It's only a little lean too, but it's very efficient, it works very, very well. 
Now to clean it, I'm using an algae side, bacteria and everything side. It is marketed as a patio and drive cleaner. I've checked it out, it doesn't hurt the plants etc. If you do get it on your plants then obviously wash it off straight away. But it will take out all the algae from in the glass and all the cracks in the wood. We used it last year and it was very very good. All I'm going to do is I've done the mix, what it says on the container. I'm going to spray it on and leave it for a few days and then I'll just come in and have a look. And if it wants to wash down, I can just wash it down with hose pipe. Okay. Now when I've done the walls with the patio cleaner, as we call it, I'm then going to put some jade fluid on the gravel and then shut the doors. Okay, but now I haven't got a lot of time, so I'm just going to do mainly the back wall and perhaps one side wall just to show you. It's a fan nozzle I'm using my knapsack. This is the knapsack I use or used to use for the weed killers, etc. So now I keep it for these sort of jobs. The one I use for soap, which is the other one, I don't put any chemical in that at all. I keep that just for the soap to keep the green fly and white fly down on the thing. Now you can use a hand pump, anything to spray it on, even the hand nozzle if you want, just to get it on and leave, but do put it on. Take care when you're doing it, obviously, and just put it on, shut your doors and go. It looks a bit soapy, but that's fine. There you go, love. And then the next section, I just pull it off. There you go. <coughs> Straight across the glass and everywhere, look. I put the jade fluid now onto the gravel. You can use this on the walls instead of the other if you want. Again, just putting it on and letting it go to on its own. And when the gravel's done, I just do this concrete in there. Yeah. And across the step. Now then, this is... Uh, that's the greenhouse done, I've pulled the doors to, we just leave it for a few days. I haven't done the roof inside, I'll do that separate, I have to put my hat on then. Now, next week, we'll be going to Gemma's again, where we've delivered all the pumpkins and squashes. And she, now Gemma, if you remember right, it's our daughter and she's a florist. And she's going to show us another arrangement for Halloween. Quite looking forward to it next week. Gemma will be in charge next week. So next week will be one for the ladies and the flower rangers amongst us. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.